Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Julia Masalska and this is Made. Today we're going to be reviewing some of you guys' portfolios. I actually got a lot of submissions and I'm actually really happy about that because, um, you know, we can go through all the different projects um, that are possible to make and we're going to take a look at some inspirations as well. So um, I'm really happy to have you guys here. Um, thanks for everyone joining in the chat. I can see we have Rahul, Oscar, Jani, Ferhan, Echo, um, Shiripat, Monica joining, Andy. Thanks again for submitting uh, your portfolios and we're going to be reviewing them just now. Just let me get, uh, get to some uh, of the things I wanted to um, tell you first. So let's talk about this channel. Um, the goal of this channel is basically to educate design and to educate freelance work. And um, I would like to teach you guys things that I haven't learned in school. And this is really ha um, have become my aim, you know, to kind of bring this closer to young designers and um, to show them things that actually are not really taught in school, but actually are learned by doing in real life. So um, welcome everyone who's new here. Um, feel free to subscribe. This is something we're going to be doing more often. I'm mo going to be live here on my channel um, almost every week. So um, feel free to subscribe and become a part of this family. All right, guys. Awesome. So let's jump right into it and let's jump right into our portfolios. I have a lot of portfolio submissions as I, sh as I told you guys. So we're going to start with one that has been submitted as a PDF. There's different uh, file formats you can submit your portfolio as. Uh, PDF is one of them. PDF I would recommend if you guys don't feel, don't feel um, good sharing your work um, online or if you have some work that not everybody can see. For example, if it's um, have some clients that don't allow you to share it online. So then um, PDF is the best way. Otherwise, if you don't have any work that is not allowed, being allowed to, sh to be shared online, you can uh, easily create an online portfolio, but we'll get into this after this, this portfolio. All right, Taylor, the first portfolio we're going to be reviewing is from Taylor Extra. Thanks for submitting. I can already see this cover page is kind of um, doing, looking really great i love the colors um i think your logo kind of works well here as well and um maybe i would see how the white space works because as you can see here this part inside the circle is a little bit bigger than this part and that creates kind of like a disbalance a little bit so i would maybe try um, either pushing te and the dot a little bit to the top and maybe a little bit to, to the right or just play with it so that the white space is distributed evenly that is very imp an important thing in graphic design um the white space it's it's like a thing so um the white space of course um helps your eye to see something more as balanced and um, it's more satisfying if something is balanced, right? So for us, we want to see things that are balanced, that are, you know, uh, relaxing. So that's what we want to see. Although I have to say your colors are very relaxing already. I think this red is not too bright. It's already more like, um, you know, on the um, natural side. And also this blue is not, um, is not too uh, biting bright. And I think this is really great color combination that you picked for yourself. Um, red and blue, I think for graphic designers are a great color combination. Um, blue, I think always has this kind of uh, feel of, you know, um, of education. If you look on any education site, you will find a lot of red, a lot of blue and mostly blue actually. And, um, and if it comes to like uh, banks as well, you will find a lot of blue color. So that color kind of, um, I feel like it's been used a lot in, uh, in a sector where you kind of have to be very professional and very corporate. Um, so um, that's a great color combination. All right, let's jump to the next slide, Rabbit Run. Um, I like that you put a little description on the right side, book cover design. That already kind of gives uh, a good idea of what, what is going on who you did it for. For all of you guys who are just starting off with a portfolio, it's always important to describe your projects. Hi, hi, thanks everyone for joining. I can see Rizal, Philippe joined, Marie, Ivana. Thanks for joining guys. And Christelle also. Let, us, let me know guys where you guys are from and if you're new here, that would be great. Okay, uh, book cover redesign. And also I love this, um, these furry elements that you added. It kind of um, 
it's it's really interesting i believe it's also very interesting to touch i would even love to like have it as a physical object and you know being able to experience this um design i think it's really great all right the next one girl decept october so i think it's good that you put a magazine cover on the left side that kind of already gives you an idea okay this was this work was done for a magazine so this is what I under understood right away. And um, this project was to just simply lay out the stories as seen in Fonts and Porters Quilty September and October issue. Yeah, that's super great. And the way you put it here, it's, it's amazing. I would maybe see the, with the layout of the text and of the magazine, maybe you can kind of like build a line here so it doesn't like jump from one side to the other. And let's see here the content your modern heritage the content is great your layout here is good um this text here at the top maybe i would try in the italic but i guess this work has done has been done and printed already so it's the way you're presenting it is it works pretty well okay maybe here i would even create a mock-up of an open magazine where you kind of put this page into the mock-up that would be great too all right, next one, eating well banner ads. Yeah, I think that that works really great here with your mock-up with the um, with the iMac. Um, the designs of your of your uh, banner ads are great. It's just here I see a little uh, blurriness, so the um, export file seems to be a little low resolution. So I would make I would always make sure that um, see if you look at frozen entries here and frozen entries here this file has been um has been exported in a higher resolution than this one so i would always make sure that they all have the best resolution for the screen because um the person who is receiving your portfolio it's a pdf portfolio they're going to be reviewing it on the screen so make sure that it's exported perfectly for the screen and for that you can um in illustrator for example you can export for the screen and you can decide the screen size um I believe in every single software you can kind of determine the uh, the pixelation of the artwork and of course don't, make sure that you don't export it in too high resolution because your PDF can get really heavy and really difficult to kind of send uh, send over sometimes it doesn't even fit in an email if you have a very large portfolio so make sure to just export good enough for the screen all right a great job here uh, branding okay that looks really good here i love the colors it works well here at the bottom i would maybe retouch the photo a little bit um it looks like the background it looks like the photo itself is a little is a little dark in comparison to all the others so here i would just um add a little bit of brightness and maybe uh, touch up the background a little bit maybe even add a color here in the background maybe one of these maybe the blue would be great because it will balance the blue that's already at the top here it will be repeating itself in the bottom so it kind of creates this relationship between the pictures and that um, gives a good flow for the eye so that will be great all right thanks guys thanks guys for joining let me know if you guys have any question um Felipe is from brazil we have indonesia paris in the house awesome everybody as usual i'm not surprised we have we always have people from all over the world <clears throat> Cheers coffee to everyone. Sorry, a little coffee break. All right. Um, this project, symbol set. Very great. I, I just see little, little things here, little details. And you know what? I have to tell you guys, if you publish a project, make sure everything's perfect because... Um, because the client always looks for the little imperfections. They want you to create the best work for them, right? So they don't want to see no imperfections whatsoever. I mean, like here, for example, let me see if I can, uh, I can really zoom in here. Maybe I can. Yeah, I can actually, let me see. Okay, guys, here you see this little stripe. This artwork is so perfect otherwise. Okay, here also I see a little stripe but um otherwise this artwork is so amazing and those little tiny details they do really make a difference so really really make sure that you that you don't have those little details um you know that are kind of disturbing for um for the client 
All right, guilty again for a magazine. Love it again that you put a little cover here. Maybe it could have been. Uh, oops, 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 oops. I went all the way too far. Let me see. Oh yeah, here. So um, maybe again you could use a cover for to to say okay this is a magazine and then I would show this picture here which show this uh, shows this uh, carpet. Um, which is, I think, the, the important thing that you wanted to show here because that's what you've been working on. Um, okay, this is interesting. Okay, so this is basically an instruction on how to make this. Uh, okay, yeah, this is, this is really cool. I would like to know again here because you only have this big sheet, but how does this fit into the magazine? It would be great to have a magazine that's open, a mock-up, mock -up, and then apply your artwork into the double page. How would it uh, look like exactly in the magazine? Right, because right now it's kind of difficult to imagine. You have these uh, page seven and page eight on one sheet. So how is it distributed? You know, to determine good layout, you also need to be able to imagine how does it look inside the magazine. Otherwise, I think your work is really great. It's it's really um, you work very professionally. You can see it's just like the presentation um, could be you know improved on a little bit. All right, next one. BNHD discover social media. Okay, that is awesome. I can see here, this is what I mean. I can see this ad that you're presenting here right on the phone. So I can see how the typefaces and the photos that you picked look inside the phone, inside the ad where it's supposed to be. So that is always great to show guys. How does your work look where it's being applied? So let's say you're designing a poster. How does this poster uh, look like when it's somewhere on the wall? So just grab a mock-up. There is tons of mock-ups for all the different things and you can even make your own mock-up. Just hang a, a white sheet on the wall and then, you know, uh, Photoshop your artwork into it. That works as well. So um, I think this came out really great. This page here, I really like. Um, the only thing I don't really um, see here at the bottom, so you have this layout line that is supposed to be kind of closing up with the other artwork here. So let me zoom in here so I can show you exactly what I mean. So here you have this line that goes like this. So I, I would increase up to this, up to this line here, um, the other artwork as well. So so it kind of continues in a smooth line. And the same thing at the top as well. Or if you want to kind of uh, keep these two ads by side, I would remove them a little bit further away from this other ad so they can kind of stand by themselves. All right, but this work is actually really good. I feel like if you are seeking um, if you are seeking clients like this for digital ads, um, you should present digital ad um, artwork so that people can see okay this person is good at digital artwork so we're gonna give her more digital artwork right so this is how it works whatever you put into your portfolio is exactly the work you're going to get nothing more nothing less all right my friends hope you still can see me here all right are you guys still there Oh no. Okay, let's see if you guys are still there. I have something here that I need to set up that's a little bit annoying. So I'm sorry about that guys. It's um so my screen doesn't work, my additional screen. So I kind of have to um set this thing up all the time with my with my screen. And uh, it's this one. I'm right back, guys. Just give me one second. All right. I don't know why this is not working. Hopefully you guys are still here. Let me know if you guys are here. Um, I'll just open my thing here so I can see at least your comments. Sorry about that. 
uh, I hate computers, honestly. <laughs> okay, let me hey, let me do this real quick. We we're gonna have a little inception here. Just want to see if you guys are still all on and working here. Let's see if you guys are here, here, there we go. Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys are still here. Okay, good. That's awesome, perfect. All right, so let's continue. Let's continue with this portfolio here. Okay, so, all right, great. Sorry about that. I'm, I don't know, I have this additional screen and it's, it keeps on disconnecting all the time. All right, so let's see. <clears throat> let's see the next page. Grumpy Bowling CO. Okay, this is great. Um, I'm wondering what these stickers are. If there was a chance to kind of make them a little bit more accurate, you can even edit that in Photoshop, make them a little bit more accurately cut out. If that's supposed to be like that, that would be great. And um, um, I would also work a little bit on the photos. Just put the photos into Photoshop and watch a tutorial on YouTube on how to um, edit product photos. It will give you a great insight. It's really not that difficult. I learned it myself online, so I can really recommend you guys just go on there, edit your photos, and you can even make it look way more professional just because you edit the photo. So um, I can, I'm gonna drop you guys a link here in the description um, to videos that I think are really helpful to retouch, or I even make my own, okay. I'll make you guys a video on how to retouch product photos like this so you can get a great um, you know great quality picture out of even um, something like that okay awesome so Valencia this is a great um, looks like a great branding design here uh, logo logo design and branding okay I think this came out amazing the logo is really good it's uh, Valencia um, I've been to Valencia it's a great city volleyball tournament sign up yeah it's it's great i love this this is perfect you can leave this leave this like that all right i believe we reached the last page here and um let's jump into the others we have tons of other submissions here and let's take a look so we are going to start with kwahish kwahish thank you so much for submitting your portfolio um and uh we are going to jump into two of your projects here real quick so we can um, kind of give you an idea this is a this is amazing this is really great logo and the, I, le I love the way you kind of put the logo um, and with a with a lifestyle image or with an image in the back just to give an idea okay this is probably a logo design or a branding design and then you give it uh, give it a, a description which is amazing it's a brand identity design for an imagery stationary brand it's a French stationary brand which tries to bring simplicity and classiness together for all kinds of profession it's trying to bring comfort and all his designs to support you all in your path and success to success hope you like it yeah i think that totally works and you're talking about um um simplicity and classiness together which i think really um is shown in your in your artwork yeah and what i always say guys if you're designing a brand it's important to not just have one logo it's it's very important to have different ways to apply this logo like here for example we have a word mark here we have a letter mark what else do we have we have the different ways to apply the logo um here oh it would be cool if you would apply the logo on the band itself as well that would be nice but otherwise, I love the way you kind of stay consistent with the colors and with this, you know, soft um, feel, soft and elegant. For me, I really love this. This works super well. Um, the only thing I would maybe avoid here is uh, writing um, uh, upside down. Maybe I would, I would write it from left to right like that. So it says paper and stationery, you know? So um, I would like to... To tell you guys that it's important to avoid stuff like that just so it's easier to read uh, for the person who is seeing your logo it's really it's really uh, important to um to kind of make it legible for everybody and now that it's kind of upside down you know it can be kind of tricky 
but yeah it does give it an interesting feel again here you're staying consistent with all these colors it's super great here we have a little bit a different shelf of a shade but still we have this light blue and this uh, pinkish color here um, amazing here in the letter um, letter paper or what's it called a stationary paper I would um, I'm always adding text like as if it's a real letter to a customer um, or you know to um, to somebody else so um, let's take a look at the next one sorry guys um, okay so here meet our brand mascot that's cool that's super cool I love the way you kind of also put the logo here into the um, into the brand mascot it's great super cool works well and you even see guys this is what I mean so um, you even use the elements from the logo to make a pattern or to make brand elements for uh, for the brand so that is super super cool and you made a brand guideline this is amazing this is really great and very useful for uh, you know for clients here um, I will give you one tip um, just uh, decrease the opacity of the drop shadow because it's very dominant right now it's even even if we look here your your um, your background is white this background is white so all you see right now if you kind of zoom in um, you see the, these lines everywhere and that's not what you want to see you want to concentrate on the on the actual artwork that's inside this um, you know this uh, frame so you want to always have this um, shadow very very subtle just very very subtle probably only if this is a hundred percent I would only do like 20 okay here we have a little it's a little something something that I saw uh, let me see oh yeah here look so I was talking earlier about little imperfections that the clients are looking for so this is the type of imperfections rather you know decrease the size of the uh, background color a little bit above the artboard and even if it's above um, it's better than if it's like kind of cutting in here so um, you don't want to do that you try to avoid those little uh, things here and it's it's kind of you know it's repeating itself here so um, it just shows that you weren't you know very attentive and clients they want somebody who is a hundred percent a hundred and ten percent attentive so um, it's very important to pay attention to the small details and to really make sure that everything's perfect before you kind of uh, bring it to the client your uh, designs and your artwork is amazing here I love it I love the way you show it here it works super well um, logo misuse very important of course um, the color palette very well defined RGB CMYK and the hex code um, that works well again here we have this little thing here um, again we have this little white stripe inside so um, and again here so please this is something very very important make sure that everything's perfect before you publish it awesome and here again we have um, this little line and uh, this overlay this light light pink overlay uh, I, I'm assuming it's supposed to go until the top uh, but it doesn't so that's a little disappointing I have to say it's a little disappointing why, why do you do that um, no I'm just a very very like I'm a perfectionist so that's why I see these things clients might not even see that but um, otherwise your work is great let's jump into the next one um, this is this is an amazing project and you already have a badge which in illustrator which is amazing it's good to have some badges this one is great um, this is cool okay so I love this poster here it looks really amazing I love Montserrat um, and again here a perfect example you're designing a poster so show it on the poster right perfect preach all right let's see and i love the way again the way you do the description under the first expression that is awesome and here at the top i would maybe um decrease the padding just remove this little white space just so your project starts perfectly with the first image bam all right promotional copy not for sale 
I love this. This is super cool. It looks very experimental. It looks amazing. India. Cool. This is nice. This is a packaging design. I'm assuming that you made. Did you start from the left again? Okay. <laughs> um, very difficult to read for me, but I guess that makes you spend more time reading this poster, which is also good. You kind of do want to make the viewer spend more time with your artwork because then they have the time to create a connection with your artwork. So although I'm saying that um, reverse type or uh, upside down type is difficult to read, but on the other hand, on the positive side, it's helping you to create this connection to the viewer so it can make things interesting as well i believe if in this case you just wrote it um in the regular uh, you know way not mirrored then uh it will be probably a little boring but this makes it exciting cool i really love this poster it's amazing i also love the way you kind of put a little cut in here so or probably it's a mock-up but um it looks really great it looks awesome it reminds me of one of my uh, early artworks where i kind of used a scanner and put all the objects on it like similar objects to this i don't know banana cream you can just put th things on top let uh, let the lid open and then just scan through it and see how it looks just, just a little tip for you guys to experiment okay cool this is awesome great good here I would avoid different formats. So here you, if we scroll up to the top, I believe you had all the um, mockups covering until until the um, the end of the site here. And now if we go on to this one, it kind of sticks out. You know these little white spaces here, it sticks out. So I would just extend the artboard. In, even if it's in Photoshop, just extend it. And then there is something that's called. Um, What's it called? Um, so there is a way to fill it. Um, content, content aware fill. It's called content aware fill. I think I think you just have to select these rectangles, then go on to object, content aware fill, and Photoshop fills those sites for you completely automatically, and you don't have to do nothing more. It's perfect. All right, what else is here? I want to see your guys' comments, to be honest. Let me let me quickly try to tune into this one. I, because I can't see you guys right now. Um, I want to see what you guys are saying. If you have any questions. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. We have We have some of you who are new here. Thanks for joining. This is awesome. All right, certificate of not losing your shit. Congratulations. Uh, I'm not a, the biggest fan of these typefaces. Uh, I guess um, this is the this is the important part of it that you're not supposed to love this poster. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure. We have uh, like we have the. I feel like we have the most hated typefaces covered here. We have um, Comic Sans, and we have this weird, uh, weird one. So, um, <laughs> so this really is not attracting me at all as a designer. Uh, but I guess that was like the way you kind of played with it to make it funny. Yeah, that ch that works. I guess that works. If that that was the goal. But yeah, great um, graphic posters. By the way, guys, I'm doing daily creative challenges soon um, on the 25th, uh, on 26th, I'm starting on behance.net slash live. And we're going to be doing daily creative challenges. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's something related to what we just saw. So stay tuned for that. Okay, cool. Well, great. Kwahish, um, I love your projects. Just work on the details and otherwise you are good. Let me close this so I don't have to. Okay. Okay, Jamil, I got this email, this web, uh, website from you. Hire me. Okay, let's see what, what it gives me. 
Um, okay. Okay, I see. So, uh, wait, is this your side? No. Okay, I don't know, Arjamil. I just opened the link that you sent me, but it doesn't seem to be like a portfolio. Let's see, maybe we can open one of these links. Let's open your Behance. Let's take a look at some of your projects on Behance. All right, monograms. I'm picking two projects. Uh, let's take a look at your above me first. I'm a designer, brand design developer. I, I aim to provide solutions from concept creation to final execution through a clear and functional design. I help brands to communicate the stories behind them and generate the value needed. I commit to br build brands which can, take, which can talk by themselves when nobody's there to do it. That's a very good one, I use that too. Um, brands have to talk for themselves when you're not there to talk about your brand your brand has to speak about it, about itself. That's very true. Okay, the description looks so it looks good so far to me. Here you have a lot of links. So if you want, if you have a specific one that you prefer clients to go to, I will put that one first. Then if you have a secondary, like let's say Instagram or something, put it as a second one. You have the power to arrange things in the way the person sees them. So, um, if you want, do you want me to go into your Facebook now? Okay, I'm gonna go into your Facebook and what will I see? I will probably see some private photos and that's not exactly what you want clients to see. So, um, <clears throat> you only want to put the links that are important for the client. So, it's either this portfolio or maybe your Dribbble or maybe your Instagram where you kind of show off your work or your LinkedIn. Or if you have a YouTube channel, that's also interesting. Twitter, I'm not sure if that's the perfect platform to share um, to share your design work, but um, Dribble seems to be. Um, LinkedIn is good to kind of get to know about you, about your experience. So that I would maybe put in the, uh, in the last position, and really the ones where you where you're actually presenting work. Mine is, for example, Instagram. Um, no, not really. Mine is not really Instagram. So for my design work, of course, my Behance page is the most important thing. And I also have a website where people can go on to. But then my Instagram is kind of for my community. So you guys, that's my um, go to because that's also part of my work. OK, Jamil, let's um, let's take a look at some of your projects. I want to see some packaging design. And what is that poster series? Poster series are great because you can really learn. It's for you, for you, great, not for the, um, not for the client. It's good for you because you can learn uh, new tools. You can, um, you know, extend your skills. So here I can already see. You've been experimenting with gradients. You've been, uh, you know, experimenting with shapes, and that is awesome. That's great for you. Poster series are awesome for your own development here. Super experimental, love these, love these, love these, love these. I'm talking as um, in a perspective of a designer, not of um, a potential, um, you know, client. Let me see what, so I'm, I'm gonna look at this as a client now. What am I gonna see? So let's say I'm a client and I'm looking for somebody to help me with my brand and I have some brand that also maybe involves packaging. So let's let me go onto this one that involves packaging. Just trying to share my like thought process or try to kind of um, put yourself in the shoes of a client. What are they looking for? They're probably looking for something that's similar to what they are, you know, want to want you to work on. And um, and that's why I try to figure out what is what will be interesting for a potential client. All right, body oil. Those are great mock-ups. I would love to see more um, a close-up so I can see how the design really looks right now. I can see it all only in the 45 angle and uh, there is no other angle. Oh yeah, here in the front. Okay, let's see. You know what? Um, this little thing could be actually your cover at the top do that try that try this thing this part here to be your cover but like really really big at the top and then continue with a um, description 
By the way, nobody really cares about the duration of the project. All they care about, did you achieve the goal that was, you know, that the client wanted you to achieve? What, who's the client? What, uh, who, what kind of um, um, target audience do they want to, to uh, attract? And then um, I would bring that into, connect that to your design process. So let's say the client wanted to attract more young customers and that's why they wanted me to kind of help them with their design to attract the right clients. And to do that, I made this and this and this design decision to make it to improve the product's um, appearance to their specific target audience. That would be a great description. And um, here I can see uh, the client, a healthcare and beauty product. That is great. That is good. Um, I would maybe not write that you've been working on this for seven weeks because um, it can be very intimidating for a, for a potential client. Imagine they only need to do a, one little packaging and they will think that you will need seven weeks to create just one little packaging. Can you imagine? They will be thinking, wow, I will need to pay him so much money. This will be probably very pricey. Do not put that. Very intimidating. Um, but otherwise, this artwork is good. Your packaging design is, is good. I would love to see... I would love to see, you know, all the pers all the different um, all the different directions. Um, I would see the product. I would like to see the product in all the all the in every direction. That would be great. So I can kind of imagine how it looks like on a shelf. Maybe in context with other products. So let's say it's a body oil. Um, I don't know. Maybe in context with other cosmetic products, uh, or I don't know where would you put it. The body oil, maybe in the bathroom, and uh, you know the context um, is a little bit missing here, and it's a really dark mock-up here. So um, I would really give more context about this, and maybe also even about the the client group who's using it. Use some lifestyle photos in the background, um, like we saw earlier. So um, maybe like, I don't know, like a fitness uh, guy and then whatever, and then put the product next to him. So it kind of already looks like, you know, it belongs to him. Otherwise, this design is good. Definitely useful. Let's see UI UX. Okay, guys, UI UX. It's not, it's not um, something that I'm like 100% proficient with, but I can definitely give you some feedback. So I love this slide here. The slide uh, looks really great. I would love to see some animation here. You can create some animations really easily by just going into XD. And you know, um, I have a video on that if you want to check that out um, about how to create uh, very quick animations uh, in XD without any timelines and anything. It will take you five minutes, but it will improve the experience of this um, project so much okay here at the top part i'm kind of i'm missing the phone you know i'm for me it's it's difficult to understand how this goes you know how this goes on the phone right now it looks really large all the typefaces look very large how does it look inside the iphone will they still look large or so i would create a mock-up okay you have created a mock-up here this is better. If you have a comparison with a phone, this works way better. And I would maybe even remove this and create some more um, function descriptions like you did here. Uh, spend zero online. Okay, payment. I would love to see more screens also. What? Where is this going? If I click payment, where does it go? What? Um, what if I scroll down? What happens here? I would love to see more of that. Just, um, you know, a project is more valuable if it's better to understand. And if you can see you spend more time working on it, you know, um, finding all the small uh, de details and like how, you know, finding all the solutions for, for this application. And also I'm totally missing the description. <clears throat> what is this money wallet app? supposed to do uh, what does it help you with um who is it for and uh, um you know just more information more context 
And you did do it in XD. So why did you do any animations? Why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting very emotional with uh, with design. Okay. Um. Thanks, Jamil. Um. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's jump to the next one. And by the way, Jamil, this was not the best idea to send me this. You've sent me. You've sent me seven different links. I asked you for one, one only. The same thing with a client. If you want to um, impress your client and you and they ask you for your portfolio link, don't send them this. Send them the link that you want them to see. Why would you give them so much freedom? <laughs> okay, that was a weird question. But yes, you definitely need to give them a little bit more um, so that this, the decision is not that difficult for them anymore to make, you know? Make the decision as easy as possible. Johnny, good to see you. Thanks for submitting your portfolio. Uh, your cover thing here, your cover thing does not really, okay. So it's, I see. So it's just my window that's kind of making it weird. So Johnny, the, for the top, I would definitely leave some space at the top and at the bottom of your logo. Please do that. Please do that. Because now the, your logo is great. It will totally, you know, make an impression if you have your own logo here. But the problem is now that I, I can't really see it. I can't really see what's what's underneath. Okay, I do have a weird screen. That is true. But um, I would love to see it as a whole, you know, when I when I go onto your page. Okay. Hi, my name is Jan Filippo. I'm a logo designer and graphic designer based in... Apis Italy. You can contact me for work or on Instagram. Yeah, I would love to um, hear more about your um, interests. What type of graphic design do you like to do? Because that's the type of clients you're going to attract, right? So you want to kind of specify because it will make it easier for the client to uh, make a decision for hiring you above somebody else because you're doing something specific and you are specialized in it okay so for me i am mostly doing packaging and branding design those are my two specializations and they go very well together because um if somebody needs a branding and if they have a product they probably are also going to do the packaging works well together okay all right, let's take a look. Which one are we going to take a look at? I think I've seen the Harry Potter one before. You've submitted that one earlier for the Adobe Live. Or you sent me, I think you, be I believe you sent me the, I've seen your projects already, but okay, let me, um, let me, let me, let me give you a feedback. Food me is a food delivery service. Okay. Great, this is great. You have the logo, you have a little description, and it's even custom made. You know, it's not just the regular, um, uh, the regular Behance typeface that you kind of um, just put in, just to put in some text. You really made this artboard, and you really made yourself the. Um, uh, you really took the time to kind of you know pick a typeface for this and add the color. So that's great. Plus, plus point. This is cool. This is cool. It's just too many logos at the same time. I would maybe... Hmm... I don't even know. I would maybe kind of uh, include a photo in here instead. Instead of having this. Or I would extend this um, portion here, this brown one, and put the logo in the middle. You know? And maybe make the logo even a little bit smaller because right now... <clears throat> I have a pretty large screen and your logo is kind of like it's jumping on me a lot because it's very very big so i would maybe like make it a little bit smaller and place it in the center so make it one one a big thing in yellow with the logo inside and one big thing in brown uh, for the, with the logo inside and maybe uh even the white one in between why not just to show the different color combinations this is good too the circles are just really, really big. Right now, they look like this size for me. <laughs> I make them a little bit smaller. Make them a little bit, you know, more subtle. Maybe even um, 
maybe even combining with some you know imagery or something in the background that would be cool the mock-up here is great love it the bag is a little bit too dark i believe i would make this whole mock-up a little bit brighter use the same uh kind of background color as here so it kind of matches um, together because right now this yellow is kind of you know it's really dark and um it's it's not the same as in the other two mock-ups so it kind of sticks out it's a little bit darker than these two and i would also work kind of work out the um the little dark spots here on the bag because they're kind of you know they're stealing all the attention and your logo is not getting enough attention here your logo is like on the dark side of the bag somewhere like hiding like don't see don't look at me i'm hiding you know so that's the impression that i get but the the branding itself food me is good <clears throat> this works well here that's nice i like this you did a good job here you know working around this uh, photo um make the, making this photo uh, blurry or maybe it's even something that you already got like that so you know giving some blurriness to the background always good okay great project johnny let's take a look at this one Soam is a brand of soap it's my personal project and it's consistent in da, 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 da. okay cool works the resolution here is a little low i would um i would try and make it so it's so it works on different kinds of screens i do have to admit i have a pretty large screen but um it should still work just export it in 150 dpi next time 150 dpi okay and this is bukhari script so you're just showing the typeface that has been used uh, you know what i would maybe instead of writing your logo like this i would maybe use a a b b c c and so on and then write bukhari script and also this object here so with these leaves i would incorporate some, them some somewhere on the side here so they're not too much inside the artwork itself and i don't even think you need those here because um this part here is to show off the typeface right of your brand so this should concentrate on the typeface if you want to bring elements like this put them a little bit further away you know give them a little bit of more space <clears throat> And you can even show them as like brand elements later on and say hey i've created a pattern for this brand look this these are the leaves and you can put them on the side like that okay it's cool that you're putting the colors here awesome you can maybe even add not just the hex code you can add the rgb the cmyk um the pantone color so all those will be interesting to see maybe even a little bit smaller here this is an amazing mock-up great job well done here this is really amazing and this is also really really amazing it looks really good um the thread kind of looks a little too bright here but um it does look great you did a great job here amazing mock-ups these two mock-ups you know um they really give it a nice kick for this uh, for this project um it's good that you put them in the end because you know it's kind of like a surprise effect it's like hey by the way this is how it looks nice okay johnny thanks for submitting all right so now we are going to look at the uh at the resume here from um from anahees anahees and we have some links here that's awesome linkedin behance and instagram see it's so much easier if you have less links and you can access them really easily. Let's take a look at your Behance. Anahees. Yeah, there is some great projects here. I love that. This is awesome. But why would you send them a PDF if you have those projects in the Behance portfolio? Okay, I guess this is an, it's, it is an option. Okay. All right. I like the way you're kind of showing off your scales. This page, though, kind of looks very loaded on text. 
so I would um, definitely take a look at some there's some great um, templates for um, resumes that you can use that kind of look more um, you know more interesting and they can you know help you create something more appealing and easy to understand um, okay I will maybe even divide this into two pages just because there's so much text here education awards and publications that is awesome to add skill social media brand da, 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 da. okay so in skills I have I have a suggestion for you so I would divide the software skills from your soft skills or whatever design skills because um, one thing is to mention the software like Adobe Creative Suite um, um, yeah that's I think the only one but I would definitely um, give a little bit more insight on your software skills because some clients will be looking you know for somebody who specifically works in certain software especially if you're applying for a full-time job and they will know oh we don't work with um, Adobe Creative Suite we work with um, PowerPoint <laughs> so then um, you know they will already know if that's a software that you can do or not or work with work in or not and if you you know mention the program specifically that you are specialized in will be awesome okay again team leadership collaboration event planning social media marketing it's a lot it's a lot I would maybe try to uh, <clears throat> try to narrow them down to the most important ones just so because this is sounds like you're an all-around talent and it's very hard to believe to be honest um, I I am trying to only pick like four to five at the max just the things that you're most uh, proficient in <clears throat> and then again divide between um, software skills and um, and soft skills okay experience co-founder it's good that you're mentioning the things you have achieved the results that is really good and guys it's really it's really good if you start you know from your latest position and go down um, back in time that is really good because nobody wants to know what you did 10 years ago here at the top right you need to put the most important information which is your most recent experience at the top okay and you know what I also do here on the side um, I have like a line and then I have the years so the person can see right away how many years of experience I have right so that's also very important here I, I have to like look at the little okay yeah 2016 um, you do show that but you know it just makes it makes it easy to understand and easy to um, comprehend art fest this is good I mean I like the way you show your artwork this looks way like this looks really corporate to me um, and even the way you just put your pages with the with the text you know very corporate um, portfolio I would love to see something more you know more um, designed I would love to see a more designed portfolio Adidas yeah no you have a lot of great work it's just the way um, the way you put it into your portfolio maybe can be a little bit more you know like a magazine kind of thing so it's so you know so it's more interesting to look at and uh, yeah no you do have a lot of great work it's definitely awesome now let's take a look at your Behance because you're probably showing all of these works here as well I'm thinking or maybe not oh this is better this is so look so you have so much great work why would you put it in a PDF portfolio just send them your link send them your link show them all of these beautiful things here that you have this is all amazing why don't you put it in your PDF portfolio no guys honestly if you don't need to um, if you don't need to if you don't need to hi hide some projects or um, you know projects that you done have done 
that are not supposed to be published yet um don't do a pdf just you know make yourself a site i have a good tip also by the way if you i want to show you something 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 that you can use here i have my adobe portfolio set up it's free so if you have your uh, behance account here adobe portfolio and now i have my site that's from connected to my behance portfolio so okay so if i click click ed edit site so my page i want to let's say i want to preview it <clears throat> uh <clears throat> my page's name is actually i want to show you that okay my my page is masalska.myportfolio.com it's almost like your own website but all it really is is just a connection to my Behance projects. So if I click this, for example, this will just show me everything that I have in my Behance project. How cool is that? You don't even need to do any work and you have your own site. How cool is that? And you can create up to three portfolios for free. So use that. Why not? Why not use it? And it's so easy to, um, you know, um, to put a portfolio together like this. And what I ha also have here, by the way, in my freebies, if you go onto the freebies, you will find the freelance contract. You can copy paste it. If you are a freelancer, feel free to use it. Of course, at your own risk. <laughs> but I have used that one and um, it works perfectly fine. And the cool thing is on your My Portfolio site is that you can also set up a contact page. You can set up an about page. You can set up an, um, you know, a work page. And I also have all my links here that I want to share. You know that, by the way, I'm also showing my Twitter, which is super unimportant. So I'm giving you guys feedback, but I'm doing, making these mistakes myself. Anyway, so um, this is good. This is good. I would try working out more, working more on the um, layout design and so on. But it's great. You can also send them your link. To your uh, behance okay uh ooh, we have uh, bruna bruna uh, bruna is a brazilian graphic designer and illustrator based in italy bruna i already love your work i'm really excited to see what's what's uh what's in this vanille you missed the beginning no worries um you didn't miss a lot yet it's okay uh, Rizal is asking if I make a portfolio on my own website, does it look professional? Yeah, sure. W depends on if your if your website is only your portfolio, it looks super professional because that also shows that you are also proficient in making websites for yourself. So, ha, huh, extra plus point. Okay, let's take a look at Bruna's site. See Bruna, do it like Bruna. Make up my portfolio dot com uh, site. So um, Bruna BSA dot my portfolio dot com. Perfect. Sounds like your own website, and it's super customized as well. See, she put her logo here. She has a nice contact page with nice uh, links, and she used her brand colors. Isn't that amazing? And that's all all the things you can do with only the. Um, the Adobe portfolio so why not do that I love this artwork I can see you're you're an illustrator you're uh, illustrating things and I can even go deeper into each project which is amazing your work is really nice I mean there is not much you have to say illustration about the cons consume of cosmetics for perdidas anomias anonymous perdidas anonymous perdidas anom anonymous okay hopefully this was the right pronunciation okay um yeah this is this is awesome i mean this looks great i i don't have no comments this looks perfect i would love if i would love like to hire someone who is an illustrator this is exactly what i want to see all right let's take a look at this one like a lady Ooh, this is a nice illustration as well i, I would like to, see, to know what type of software you use Bruna for your um, for your uh, for your illustration that would be awesome oh by the way Bruna one tip I have for you so you have tons of space here like a lot of space 
why not just make a custom cover page here with like little little you know line illustrations that's my suggestion really try that out it will bring so much more excitement about the site because you have some amazing work and i know you're capable of doing some great illustration um but this is a lot of like white space just make some just customize it make it your own little space here you know draw something that you like or you know do some lettering or whatever that would be really cool that would really improve the whole experience here i also love the way you kind of have this hover effect in the um in the adobe portfolio sites so even though you're like not a professional web designer or whatever this site trust me it does look way better than many people's uh, sites who are professional um, web designers after urban society let's take a look at this illustration oh this is so nice i'm so in love honestly um you have some amazing colors you have um i love the way you put it on the mock-up so you kind of have this feel of okay it's stuck to the wall and this is you know it's kind of like a uh like a poster so um this is awesome and this is a great mock-up as well come cb i love it and even this little things at the bottom it just shows that you really love what you're doing and you're so passionate about it you even like put your own uh, face into it a little you make a little icon of yourself because you want the person who's viewing this to kind of um, get meet you closer and appreciate your work and um, you know you give this little cherry on top and that's that makes you an amazing designer cool awesome bruna i honestly your portfolio is amazing i would just add it to this little top part here add some illustration here add some little things that are not too dominant you know not too colorful maybe just line illustrations in just one color maybe in your red or maybe even just in white so that's the only tip that i have for you otherwise everything is super super great monica jarod heach heach it sounds like a German uh, German last name. I would like to know if you're from Germany, Monica. Okay, so we have this little part here. That is interesting. Okay. All right. And here at the bottom, we have your name. We have design. We have color. We have black and white. We have artwork. Okay, so first of all, I feel like this bar here is a little confusing because you have your name as a part you have what you do you have a part of design which is color you have another black and white then you're writing artwork portraits and about so it's it's a little confusing um i would maybe just divide it into um so instead of writing your name maybe uh, about so maybe your about could be including your name and also where does it lead me because now i just so okay so i have this site and I cl i'm clicking your name and it doesn't lead me anywhere although it shows me that this is a clickable link it gives me this hover effect but nothing happens here so try try to think about this this try maybe a different template about okay about okay monica look so now i'm reading this i'm reading about then i'm going to the right side to, to look at the picture and to me right now it doesn't really make sense and uh, it's it doesn't have any connection and uh, maybe i don't know maybe if if that's your artwork that makes sense but let's see then underneath this yeah, I would just suggest you maybe use a different um, use a different template. Try a different template because this one is really confusing. It's just a lot of things and they're kind of like everywhere and there is no really no hierarchy. Um, right now, this text that's supposed to be something that I'm supposed to be reading, it's in such a small typeface. Um, I'm not even like I'm, I have to like squinch squinch my eyes to kind of try to read it so make sure things like that are um worked on because you want to work as a freelance designer artist and photographer 
And if you're a freelance designer and your typeface is so tiny, you really like, you really need to show off your your capabilities as a designer already in your in your work presentation. So that's also very important. And then you have also this contact form that's kind of um, coming after all this text. So maybe I would even do an about and a, a contact one. And here maybe I would link the contact one so people can go onto onto that. Or maybe I would put the contact page here on the side even. You really need to work on, on this, um, on the hierarchy of everything that's in this page. Uh, as, of, as, of, as of now, it's very chaotic and um, I, I don't really have an orientation. But okay, let's take a look at your artwork itself. See graphic images, you have some good, you have some good uh, graphic work here. Um, with kayak branding, I remember that one. You, I believe you did it in the daily creative challenges, which is awesome. It came out great. Here is a little, the logo is a little tiny, so maybe you can uh, kind of show a little close up of the t-shirt. That would be great. I love the way you use this pattern in the back. It's a nice, uh, nice little pattern to kind of give a little uh, dimensionality to the t-shirt. Giggles, bubbles, that's cool. You know, I would love to see more of this here, more of the, because I, right now I cannot click this. I believe you had a longer project to this. Okay, and giggles, bubble, giggle, bubbles. I would love to see more about this. I would love to know what is this for? Who is the, um, uh, is it a passion project? Um, you know, just a little bit more detail about this project. Adobe Illustrator, branding, black, white, about color. Yeah, this is very chaotic here. I, I can barely read anything. Just make sure that when you create something like that, that the person can still, um, you know, read and make it easy for a person to read something. So even if you have these crazy things going on, leave some space between them. And also combining that many typefaces maybe is not the best idea. So um, this part though is really well to, uh, to read. Adobe Illustrator, super, super well to read. Okay. This illustration is nice, it's cool, I love it. I would like to know, if, so if I'm, let's say I'm your potential, um, you're my, I'm your potential client and I'm looking at this and I want to know like, um, let's say you made this illustration for a magazine or something. So you worked for a client before. Um, make this, mock this up, put this in context with something that um, me as a client, I can relate to this. I, so I can say, ah, okay, she made this illustration for a magazine. Maybe she can make an illustration for my magazine. So that's what you want to do. You want to create this um, connection between what the client wants and what you already have. So, okay. All right, let's continue with this. Da, 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 da. There's a lot of very different, uh, different styled artwork. It is great but you want to really concentrate on what you want to work on in the future. So if you want to do, um, so I'm not sure if that's the type of things that you want to put into your portfolio because it looks like design rules cover. Um, oh, rules is very difficult to read here. I cannot read design. So put it again, put it into context. If it's a cover of something, mock it up, show it as a cover poster again here you can put it on the mock-up put it as if it's hanging on the wall a poster here also ball invitation um get a mock-up of invitation cards put your design on top of it will look great perfect code well, i don't know what this is it doesn't tell me any information what this project is about it will be interesting to know so please add some more information okay and then you kind of divide it in different things, I guess. Color, oh, okay. So see, you say it's color, but what is color? I would maybe call it photography, color photography, if that makes sense. Okay, so these are some good pictures here. It's good. 
with good pictures. You know, for me about photography, um, so this is more interesting here. You kind of are concentrating on the graphic elements that you can find inside the attraction park, right? So um, this is interesting. I love this because this is different. How many sunsets, uh, sunset pictures have you seen in your life? Probably a lot, right? So you kind of want to give a little bit of thought to the person who's viewing. So what is this about? Let's see, let's say this project could be about seeing um, graphic elements inside, um, inside an attraction park. This is the perfect example here. You have a nice little graphic element going on and you have a good contrast. Same thing here, looks good. Perfect placement. This is a really nice photo. Give some context. Give something, you know, that that makes you feel like you thought about what you were doing there, not just taking pictures. This is a nice photo. Plants. Plants are great, but what is the thought about that behind this? Um, give us give some more context again. Okay, so your most uh, the thing that I say the most for like the past 15 minutes is give more context and uh, work on your site. Um, maybe try another template. But you have some great works, so um, you're on a good on a good path, definitely. All right, next one, Kyle Lee Design Portfolio. I can see this is already well designed here. It's just uh, Kyle. It's just very empty. This whole screen is like, oh, it's like completely empty. Like as if you're like somewhere in the sky and there's nothing but clouds and you don't see anything. So when you go into somebody's site, you immediately want to get their attention and you immediately want to show them what you are all about, Kyle. So if you, Kyle, are a graphic designer, show it in your, uh, in your, um, in your first page, the, the first so you really want to maybe um, use some cover page here just motion graphics i'm interested in motion graphics let's take a look at this it's good that you kind of created this link here it's it's great okay let's take a look at this you guys are probably not going to, to hear this um or maybe you will Okay, this was like kind of like an ad for this product here. Um, so first of all, I think the, um, what's it called? This little like darkness that you've created on the sides um, does not really match to a product um, presentation. This typeface, I'm not sure what this, um, what the connection is to the brand. W what's the brand? What, where's the logo? Um, who is it for? Um, um, so you, you, it looks like you're showing a 3D object uh, here in different perspectives, probably animated somewhere with a camera flow and stuff like that. So um, it is cool. It is cool that you have kind of created this graphic. I would maybe work on the background and maybe um, on the branding of the product itself and kind of incorporate it into your um, artwork and also I have seen there is some materials that don't look quite realistic I don't know what program you used here to create this uh, I can recommend you um, uh, Cinema 4D for stuff like that they have a very great visualization of materials when you're creating a, a shot like that so um, just try and make it mo look more realistic right now to me it looks like a 3D, a 3D object also if you look at the lighting here <clears throat> The background is really bright, but your snowboard doesn't get a lot of light, to be honest, here on this side. So um, try to make it look more realistic. Take a look at some uh, professional like people who are doing this on their daily basis. There's tons of information on YouTube um, how to make realistic looking motion graphics of like products. So, um, but it's cool that you kind of go into this direction and, and show off some of, of your work. Let's take a look at print. All right, yeah, Echo thinks it's called vignette. You're right. Okay. 
Farhan is asking good questions. Good question. If I don't get any projects, how can I make a portfolio? I have a very simple answer, um, uh, Farhan. You make up your own projects. Oh. You make up your own stuff. Just make like, if you think about it, what type of brand you would like to see in this world and what type of brand you would like to work for, just create this new brand, put it into your portfolio and bam, you have a new project. And the cool thing there is you don't have no um, limitations. You can do whatever you want. So you can literally take inspiration from anything and bring it into your project. That's the cool thing. So of that, uh, I will create maybe like three to five projects. And from there, you will see if you are doing a great work, doing those, the clients will come. All right, cool. Um, any other questions? Felipe is saying uh, Substance is Adobe 3D software. Uh, well, no, Cinema 4D is not 3D, is not uh, Adobe 3D software. Um, the only 3D software Adobe has right now is um, is uh, is Dimension, and uh, also um, I don't want to see this right now, um, and also um, Dimension and also Arrow, which is kind of not really a 3D software. It's more like a virtual reality uh, th software where you can uh, implement objects into your environment that you're in right now using your mobile devices like your ipad so you kind of open uh, the app and the app shows you the camera and you can place a product on your table or wherever you like um, and that product of course has to be pre-designed somewhere else it can't even be pre-designed in dimension but in dimension itself uh, itself as of now you cannot edit the 3d objects a lot you can just you know adjust the um the size but um you cannot modify them as in like you know uh cutting things out or adding new um new uh you know whatever new objects um you can work in, in a combination with objects but it's not really a 3d modeling software Okay, Echo's asking, are you going to review Behance? What do you mean Behance? I'm reviewing portfolios that you guys have submitted through my Instagram page. So thank you again for that. Okay, okay, so we, had, we have Kyle here. Uh, okay, let's take a look at his print and then we're gonna move on. Okay, print, pocket watch calendar. This is cool. You created a calendar here. It's interesting, an interesting way of kind of putting things together. I believe uh, when people see a calendar like this, they kind of get confused because it's not only about the dates. It's not only about the numbers. It's about the days. It's about holidays. It's about, um, you know, um, how many weeks does, a, does a, a month have and, and how many days and so on. So you kind of want to kind of keep this... Um, this layout that they usually have in calendars where you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. That really makes it easier to use the calendar itself. Right now, this looks very pretty, but is it really useful? That's the question. Um, but the designs are cool. I love them. I like the typeface you picked here and the layout is pretty good. It's just that I don't see the usability being that good in this case. Okay, Rolls Royce brochure. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I'm tearing you all apart here. <laughs> um, Rolls Royce brochure. I like the mock-ups that you <clears throat> have created here. Sorry. Um, let's take a closer look. Yeah, it's good. I like it. It's um, it's a good it's a good mock-up. You did a good job here. Leather inside. Although, if you if you, even if you create something like this, uh, and this is an ad for Rolls Royce. Or is it a part of the magazine here? Um, this little space. Um, I would maybe do it all so it's branded correctly. Oh yeah, it's part of magazine. Okay, I guess um, that's fine then. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Kyle. Hopefully this was helpful. I think what you can take out of this is um, create something that's more user-friendly, like this calendar, um, make it more user-friendly. 
and uh, work on your cover page here. And I want to see more projects. Please uh, give us more projects. And on your motions, graphics, make sure you have the right lighting. Um, check out some YouTube uh, stars that are making this on the everyday base, uh, basis and learn more about it. Post more projects. And But you're on a good path, definitely. Okay, now we have a dribble from uh, Muslim Afandi. Maslima Fandi. Oh, you have some great illustrations here. That's awesome. Smoke Bay Design and Creative. Okay. What does this, what does, is this your own logo? I would like to know. It looks like your own uh, banner. I like this little badge. You're a pro. Um, it's cool. I'm not a, I'm not a very proficient in dribble, but um, it's really nice. Dia Lupa, nice. This is a nice illustration, portrait, looking great. This is more like a graphic design, smoky, smoke eyes. Okay, this is interesting. I will maybe not incorporate this little thing here just because, um, I don't know. I'm not sure what this stands for. You have smoke bay. It does seem like you smoke a lot. Is it true? <laughs> Um, so, um, I would not, this is probably not something that's interesting to a client that you smoke or smoke eyes or smoke bait. What the client wants to see is your artwork and how you kind of created, um, appealing visuals and maybe combined in, in the graphic design layout. Um, so, so that will be good to show off. And maybe if you want to attract illustration work, this is probably a good project stay safe and healthy this is a good project here that you did <clears throat> it shows that you can create illustrations that can be incorporated into a different design so for example for magazines i think that's a very popular one um or you know for somebody's whatever websites uh, usually you know companies have some illustrations on their on their website so show this context where can illustration be used let's say on the company website from some company. So make up a company, uh, put, a, put your illustration on their site and um, show it as a mock-up. There it is. Just make it look more like so it's something that you can um, sell or somebody will buy. Um, I'm, I'm assuming guys, you, are, you all want to get clients. You all want to make money with your artwork. So uh, when I see things like like that that are kind of made for yourself then it's not design it's 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 art guys because if you are creating for yourself out of yourself um you're creating art what uh, if you're working with a client and you're working in their perspective and you're trying to solve a solution for them uh, make create a solution for them then this is design because you are not only applying your own you know emotions and your own thoughts you are uh, thinking about the client you are thinking from their perspective so that is design that is kind of designing something for somebody not from not making something for myself okay so this is very important of course you can also design something for yourself if you see yourself as a brand um, but that's the, the kind of the difference Art comes from, you know, from the heart and it's more emotion based, which I see a lot of artists do that. But design is more like to achieve a reaction, to achieve a goal with the design, to um, bring out a certain message. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> okay, work from home, volume two. Th you are so great. Like you're so Muslim, you're so amazing. You have such amazing work here. Um, this is awesome. This looks great. It's a great illustration. And I love the way you kind of addressing this topic of working from home. Um, I think right now it's, it's kind of like a thing. And here you are really creating a design because you are creating for somebody, right? You're, you're not only creating for yourself. You know that other people are also working from home. So you think of them and they might relate to, the, to your art, to your artwork. And that's, uh, that's why it's more of a design and not art girls in the sky okay hi everyone i just finished the design for a vinyl cover with three fem female illustrators 
This is awesome. This is a design. So this is something you can really make money with. And I'm glad that you kind of got into it more because I see like in the beginning you kind of were just um, creating something, you know, because you thought it was cool and you know, you just created something and then you were like, oh, okay, let me just put it on my dribble. It's kind of, it's kind of looking cool. But here you started designing with your artwork. You started creating something that's useful for other people. So great job there. I think your portfolio is cool. Uh, continue doing those um, things people can relate with and people can take something out with. Things that are giving somebody a message, um, uh, maybe like motivational or, um, you know, just things that people can relate and, uh, you know, interact with your artwork um, and it, let it be a, you know, a design. Cool, Muslim. Great job. All right. I have Srinipat here and uh, we have some of her uh, projects. So she asked me to review the Kakao uh, project. Um, let's take a look at this. Um, this is a really cool brush that you used here. Um, it's kind of repetitive though, like you can see the little, the little parts here, they're very repetitive. Maybe for only this little artwork, you might as well just um, make it your own and you know, customize the sizes of the leaves, make it a little bit more, you know, detailed. I mean, it is, it is, those are great shapes. And also if you look at the leaves, so usually leaves are going like that, right? And they're going to the outside. So those little, those little lines that are kind of coming out of the middle, they're pointing out the out to the outside and these are pointing to the inside. So that shows kind of, you didn't spend enough time with this artwork. You kind of wanted to create something quickly, um, but this is not what branding is all, is all about. Branding is all about creating something that's sustainable, that's, you know, um, very detailed, thought about. And um, so this is, your logo is great, by the way. I would make the little um, uh, copyright sign a little bit smaller, uh, but, this really kind of you know shows that you made it really quickly and just like you know just to make something this sheet is cool um it's good it's nice and minimalistic i'm missing a little part here maybe some seeds um primary logo mark and alternative okay but what where would you use the alternative i would like to see that what's what's the use of the alternative and why did you create it I like how you kind of use those uh, bean shapes a little bit and translated them into the color palette. Um, I love the way you kind of use this very subtle color here um, that doesn't create a lot of contrast to the background just so your eye kind of is focused on the, um, on the colors. So that's good. Cool, you created a braille logo that can be applied onto the packaging which is awesome. Guys, by the way, I think that's very important uh, to create accessible solutions for people. Let's say uh, if somebody's blind, how are they gonna use your product? Or if somebody only sees a couple colors and if they're color blind, uh, how does your website look for them? Maybe they can't even read anything that's that, that it's saying. So please keep those things in mind as well. And also keep it in mind that some people cannot read very tiny text. So some people can see very well. So make sure that if you're designing for a client that deals with a lot of older people, like medicine, like some kind of um, heart medicine or something, um, make sure that it's legible for people that are using the product, please. All right. Felipe is saying form and function. Yes, that's totally it. And it's not only for 3D objects. I think uh, form you can find, of course, in graphic elements as well. And they also have to have a function. That's very important. Brand components, good. Okay, this mock-up is nice. I like this, this works well. This is uh, actually my favorite sheet so far, my favorite um, one. I would like to know how you created the mock-ups. It looks like those might be from Dimension. Okay. Cool. I would also, for the mockups, I would play with different lighting uh, and see how it affects, you know, the way the product looks. Um, this is really great. You kind of applied the design to a mockup. 
again here the leaves are a little bit chaotic so make sure to create either like a branch or like apply the leaves a little bit further apart from each other so they don't create these overlays okay here this actually looks pretty nice again it's a little chaotic so i would maybe even create a custom solution only for this cup i mean how many leaves are you are you having here maybe 30 so I don't think you can find the time to arrange 30 leaves next to each other nicely so they don't overlap. That shows a great designer if you kind of like have this eye for the detail. And if you're questioning design, like what what is it doing? Why is it, you know, is it easy to understand? Is it, uh, it does it translate the message that I want to uh, show? This is cool. It looks like uh, almost like stitched or something up here, like a stitched effect. I cross stitched and this looks like it's printed I like again that you incorporated Braille in here it's looking good yeah it's a great it's a great uh, mock-up here business cards cool and I like the, the bottom part here that you kind of played with the brand again and created this visual okay awesome yeah this uh, this came out great um, I think this is your best project so far so keep it up work and the next project will surely be even better okay guys now we came to the point where i would like to show you some some my my really favorite agency and i believe that all of their work is so amazing and i'm taking a lot of inspiration from them honestly and they are called anagramma so let's take a look at their portfolio anagramma studio there it is as you can see these guys are so amazing they had they have like i don't know over 200 badges here they're constantly featured in all the design channels all over the platforms so this is a great inspiration source to um to look at and to see how they're working on their branding project it's just you know it's just mind-blowing uh, if you can see what else is possible with the with the things that you are um you know working on and with the assets that you have what type of mock-ups you can create and this is all amazing okay we're gonna take a look at a couple projects but first let's take a look at this on the left side so they're providing you with their website here that is great and they're located in mexico city ideas exchange generate consistent inspiration different prints of uh, points of view opposite focus constellation and comprehensive a comprehension of your own views complement our success that's why we open our doors with the best attitude for con uh, continuously collaborate with the press and education so they're saying we love to collaborate with press and education perfect so if an education or press client is looking at this they will already uh, feel attracted and then you, you kind of have a contact uh, da, 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 for any material you might be needing we'll send it um, as soon as possible to agilize this project please add your contact information to the email you will be sending okay so it kind of gives an instruction to um what type of email um they're kind of um expecting from you if you are interested in their services now look at the services here branding services top topic so branding is their most important thing then if you go down you will find less and less and less and less uh, important ones so strategic Okay, so they kind of divided in strategic, verbal identity, and visual identity. That's also cool. And now let's take a look. Strategic, identity, and brand consulting. So that's their top, top tier uh, uh, service in strategic. Brand strategy and development. That's the second one. And the third one is communication strategy. So they kind of created this hierarchy inside those um, bullet points. Verbal identity, corporate and brand name, naming system, slogans, and taglines. And then visual identity, basic applications, peripherals and signage, printed material for corporate reports, marketing, infographics, advertising, oh, there's even more. Multimedia services, online marketing. So they have a ton of services that are kind of, um, that they probably specialized on over time. And they're, they're starting with strategic, verbal identity, visual identity. That's probably their most uh, requested ones and most worked on ones and then once you go down you kind of have multimedia services um, and those are probably the ones that are that they are not doing that much and maybe they don't want to do that much because they kind of listed it further down 
and you even have to uh, sh open this little read more button to see those multimedia services. So you can see they kind of thought about the way they put their services and um, that they put the most important ones at the top. It's all about hierarchy, guys. So um, this is the type of clients they want to attract. Contact us, call us, great. So even here in the contact us, so the uh, they would like you to write them an email at first it's because they put it on top. And then if you don't feel like writing an email, you can also call them at the bottom. Even if you make your own website, that's also an important part of it to put the mo most important information at the top. So your name and then the way you like to be contacted. So mine, uh, mine shows, uh, for example, where are my business cards? They're not here. So mine shows, for example, my name and then my phone number because I like to be called. I like to talk to my uh, potential clients because then I can build a connection with them and I can, you know, um, really show them, them that I can uh, create a, a good result for them. All right, so let's take a look at some of their projects. Let's take a look at one of my favorite ones. Actually, let's take a look at this one, Ground Zero. So see at the top, they're kind of mentioning the client, the objective, the solution. And across all of their projects, they always have this divide between the client, the objective, the solution. So they are basically providing you the information, who is this client, then the objective is uh, what are you to do as an agency or as a designer to develop a brand visual experience that brings ground zero to the top of the nail spa game. So they want to they want to approach the approach the top of the nail spa game. And that's why um, they they have been hired to kind of create this uh, outstanding brand. And the solution we've managed to develop a brand uh, a grand brand personality through a simple and timeless approach. An elegant blend and balance of black and white sets the tone for the whole brand character. We used old style, bold form and 1800s Boston type foundry specimen as the main framework to develop the logo. Okay, this is a lot of detail already and they're explaining how, like, how they approached this whole branding. This is amazing. And as you can see, this typeface, of course, um, is really great, works well. And again, because they are based in Mexico, they want to also uh, um, inform um, give this information to uh, maybe Spanish speak speaking people. So they also put the whole text that they put in the beginning um, in Spanish. So they probably first want to attract uh, clients that are English speaking, and then they want to attract clients that are Spanish speaking if they don't understand English. Again, the use of the logo here, look at this. They have took, taken the logo and then they have created this brand element as well. So um, here is the logo again. And here they're incorporating the brand element as kind of like a divider, like a representation for the logo, but it's not really a logo. It doesn't even have to do um, much with the logo, but ground zero, I'm guessing the O in the end kind of gives this um, inspiration for this um, shape. Yeah, so guys, this is a really great page to take inspiration from. And this type of mock-ups you can make yourself. They, These guys are making their own mock-ups. This is the great thing. Um, they're taking their own photos, they're editing them, and then they're putting their design on top to create these amazing presentations. And I believe you can also do something like this, even if you're creating, uh, you know, for a brand like that, you can even make your own um, na nail polish drops, or you can make test prints for, for what it's supposed to be. And you can even, um, you know, make those, um, make those in Photoshop. Here again, they're giving a lot of context. So Ground Zero is a nail spa and it has an open bar also. So they're giving a context with a, with a drink, so this is not the nail spa uh, menu. They want to show you, hey, this is a bar. This has to do with drinks. So this nail, nail spa also has a bar. And again, a little close up so you can see the typefaces better. You have this very, very nice arrangement um, that um, you know kind of represents the brand really well. And it's all in the same colors, guys. If you look at this, it's all the same color tones. Um, and you always have this gradient in the back. If you have noticed that, look, there's always this gradient in the back. And even here, there's a little gradient in the bag. Um, yeah, and this like um, 
closing note here so this is what the brand really represents here we are this is the business card that you're going to get and this is just an amazing project all right now let's take a look at this tequila tequila da luz okay uh de la luz uh, tequila brand made in mexico here they're showing okay we have not only been working on the on the packaging here we have been also working on their site okay and again the same thing we have the client the objective the solution and then same thing in spanish great we have some amazing animations here that show the website and how the website works This is super cool. Those things you can create in Adobe XD, by the way. Okay. And here we have the website, probably. This is amazing. I mean, they're showing basically the whole website and they're also giving you some context with videos and animations and make it, um, you know, way more easy to understand and give, the, give you those appealing you know, visuals that kind of really represent what they've been working on. And now we have the iPad version here, how we are interacting with our finger. You can see this little, this little object here that's moving. That's supposed to be the finger movement. By the way, those videos you can also record in Adobe XD, which is awesome. I think this is a really great project. And for me, it's always been a great inspiration. For mockups like this, feel free to just, you know, create an abstract abstract uh, format uh, for the uh, iPhone. It doesn't have to be perfect. And here we also have the flow of the mobile um, when we are scrolling uh, through their website on our mobile phone. So this will be basically the flow of the website. And in the end, they're showing everything that they've created. They've created the packaging design. They've created the um, mobile version of the, of the website for the iPad and for the iPhone. So this is also an amazing project to look at. And just in general, we have a lot of really, really cool projects here. And guys, why don't you just like start looking at brands who are kind of um, more, more established and not, you know, fellow designers? Um, take a look at people who make a lot of money and um, and get inspirations from them instead of, uh, you know, looking at other artists or designers who maybe are also just starting out. So really, like, don't don't think it's too far away. Uh, really see that goal of, you know, being a great designer and look at amazing designers. And that's how you get there quicker. All right, my friends, let's take a look at our side here just i will need to do something real quick here let me know if you guys have any questions shri pad is saying thanks for reviewing my project of course no worries hopefully this was helpful for you all right all right my friends it looks like we are coming to an end here and uh, lip. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you guys and hopefully this was kind of um, something that will inspire you um, you know to become better and to work on your pro on your projects and on your um, portfolios most importantly and um, please follow me on instagram if you haven't yet it's uh, julia masalska i've changed my name from just another sunny girl to julia masalska <laughs> more official now and uh, yeah hopefully we are um, going to do this more often so stay tuned for that subscribe and make sure to tune in uh, to my instagram to get notifications and everything and thanks so much for uh, you guys for who, all of you who, who just joined uh, or who was tuning in um, and you can rewatch the, re the replay of this, of course, on my channel. So um, you haven't missed anything. And I'm happy that you guys were here. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.